Christoph, hi, good morning. Hi. Let me just introduce you very, very shortly uh, as a very creative and versatile technical leader, also amazing listener. I know this from experience. And uh, just to say something personal, you're also moonlight as um, woodworking for your family, making amazing tables. Thank you. Yes, I do. But that's not what you're going to talk about. Um, this is going to be about APIs, Jason, and hopefully we give it a good push uh, because this project deserves all the love that it can get. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, so I we have heard multiple times today about the, you know, Megan Joy mentioned this, um, that we need a structured data Order. It would be great if we had some structured data, structured documents that help. And um, and Amara Graham referenced that you know very often you run into garbage in, garbage out situations. So today I want to introduce you to a structured data format that helps you uh, with making your entire API operation AI ready. So. Uh, I want to start with this quote, um, and it's almost superfluous at this point because we've heard so much that AI is not really magic, it's just a mirror. Um, Miranda Bogan talks societally here, but we can also take it more uh, in, into a um, narrower context. Um, it's basically just parroting back to us what we fed it. Um, if we want it to reflect something different, something meaningful, then we have work to do. I think that's a very interesting um, call to action from her, and we're going to take this to heart today. So as Amara Graham also referenced, and some other talks also sort of alluded to in passing, is that AI, large language models, whichever context you put this in, is probably the mother of all garbage in garbage out problems. It may create really you know, interesting looking output, and it may repack it, repackage our trash into colorful tra garbage bags, but it's still garbage if we're not careful. So um, what we want to do is if, if our APIs are supposed to be ready for the AI engines, then we need some machine readable information to guide um, what, how the agents can discover our stuff. And, and we need that machine readable information that encompass our entire operations around our APIs um, and that go much beyond open API or async API specifications. And um, the format that I'm going to introduce today is attempting to address this. So why another data format or why even talk about it? Um, I've had a long held um, conviction that structured data is important to organize the web, to organize our entire digital interactions. I've looked at the web API schema. Uh, however, that one has stalled since 2019 and it also doesn't cover enough detail. There's uh, a couple of other formats out there but they don't really fit the use case all that well. But APIs.json, in my eyes, is the only data format that promises to document everything that we have. So let's start looking at the JSON inside of APIs.json. At the head, you see the things that you would expect. You get an ID, name, index, nothing really that stands out and makes you go, aha, this is awesome. Um, but it needs to be there, right? As we go deeper, we start to look at an array of our APIs. And we have API IDs, names, description, also nothing mind boggling here, but absolutely needed. But next, it gets really interesting. That's why I have the little smiley there. We have properties. And the simple ones are a type of documentation and the neural that points to the documentation. I have a type of open API, which points to the open API spec and so on. So it starts to get interesting. And when we look at the entire catalog of properties, which I have reproduced here, and I don't expect you to read everything, but as you glance over this, you probably discover things in here in these properties that map to what you have. 
in your API documentation, whether that's different schemas for your various API types, whether it's your getting started information, whether it's about how to authenticate against your APIs, whether you have some versioning information, there's a lot of room in the properties to include this all. You may have SDKs, you may have monetization with price, pricing stuff. Um, it's basically all there. And the kicker is the properties are extensible. So these are reserved namespaces at the moment, but you can introduce more of your own. So the message here is, I guess, if you need a property that helps you describe everything inside of your ecosystem, APIs JSON probably has it. And if not, then you can extend it. What this does then is it helps us normalize the information architecture across your developer portal, mine, and everybody else's, because now we have a common language. And this then provides a universal signpost of where things are. And that is immensely powerful. So let's look at a first use case of why this is powerful. Let's talk about AI model training. Let's imagine that we train a generic AI model, like a typical Llama or Gemini or, or GPT uh, with APIs, JSON as entry points. What that does is it directs the model directly to high quality and curated content. And you train it to use normalized terms. So two things a signpost and normalized terms that help it figure out the commonalities across the API ecosystems across different organizations. And now you have a trained AI model that's fine tuned and it's extremely focused and it's cognizant about how APIs work in the real world. Imagine doing this with a few thousand of such files across a few thousand or at least a few hundred organizations um, that document their things differently, that gives the model now the fine tuning to en encompass the breadth and diversity, but it also helps it figure out the commonalities and helps it make those inferences and those, um, um, you know, normalizes the vectors to some extent so that the commonalities are easier to embed. So <clears throat> when you look into this use case, um, this is very similar to how, it, for example, Hugging Face, the company Hugging Face took the Llama 2 model, fed it with 70,000 open source chat interactions, and then came up with a resulting model that they named Vicuña um, that was, is now a chat enabled model. And you can read up the story in the, uh, in the in Earl that I have here, and it's nearly as good as GPT-4 uh, as, a, as a chat enabled LM, LLM. So we can en envisage using structured data to help with the training, to guide um, a fine tuned model to all the right places to really have the, high, the, the curated content that fine tuning needs. Then um, in a second use case, and I'll go in two facets here, we can look at API consumption via AI. Um, for this, you need signposts uh, so that AI or any other bots, whether it's, it's more traditional bots, that they can easily and accurately find their way. So here is where APIs.json guides the AI to the high quality curated content. This is much like the um, information boards you find at a large airport or other complex spaces. Um, it really points to the, the good stuff. It avoids that the bot is picking up random low quality information that you may not actually even know that exists, but you know this from the SEO game. The bots will discover everything, whether you want them or not, and uh, you have to step in as a human and help them not work with your, um, with your low quality content or extraneous low quality content. And the third point here is that you get to own your information. You drive the AI bot traffic with your own content instead of whatever exists out there in the stack overflows of the world or elsewhere. 
So you can own your story instead of leaving it to others. In another use case uh, that's similar when we think about RAG, retrieval augmented um, generation, um, you, we're using the apis.json file again as a signpost um, to, uh, and, and then we have other data stores that, uh, that are in there so that the AI bots can craft an integration that's based on real and more importantly, true information, because it's your curated content rather than random things. So again, it's about pointing to the high quality and curated documentation. Um, in the RAG environment, the AI can also cite where it took its data from, which is yours, obviously. And we now have, as a result, trustworthy integrations that were built. And those can be tra traced because we get the, the data sources. So now we have, if we sort of imagine this sort of medium term or, or, or far future um, reality is we can actually build integrations automatically that have a level of auditability that you otherwise would not necessarily get. Thanks to RAG and you can feed all the good stuff into, into the, the, the vector database through having APIs.json as a starting point and maybe a higher weight so that things get weighted and, and embedded properly. So when we compare this to things we already know, you can look at SEO. That's, those are things we all do. We have a sitemap to tell the crawlers where the content is. We have a robots.txt to disallow crawling and excuse the typo there of certain parts of your site and so on. We've played this game before and we know it works and now we uh, are basically going to repeat it. So in a nutshell then, um, we have a choice to make. We can drive ourselves or we can choose to be driven. And I would advise everybody here to grab the bull by the horns and actually drive your own story uh, and implement something like APIs.json data so that we help anything that exists out there, anything that goes into training to point them to the right places and not to the wrong ones. Um, my claim is that if we output structured data about our API operation, we can be part of the solution or else we leave it to chance and uh, let other people do the right thing and hope for the best. So um, one more thing I want to mention here is in a few weeks, we, I hoped I would be able to say today, but it's not fully ready. But in a few weeks, our own customers will have full APIs.json support. We're actively building this right now. And later this year, we plan to release a generic Drupal module for other Drupal-based developer portals so that they too can spit out APIs.json data. But it's not a hard format to get your mind around. You can also hand build it, but some help there is obviously useful. So we're going to build it for you. With that, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure and I'm open for questions. Thank you, Chris. One question, where would someone put the APIs JSON file for robots to find it? Should they add it to every open API spec and getting started? Where should it live? Um, the current proposal from the originators of APIs.json is to put it at the root of your developer portal. Um, there is a proposal by someone else that it should be under dot well known, where all the other well known data formats are. Um, I would say right now I would put it into the root until this is further decided so that the robots find it easily. Thank you very much. Oh, one more question. Is there an open source doc site you know of that is using APIs JSON in a good way? There are a bunch. Uh, if you go to the APIs JSON website, um, they, they have a, a bunch of pointers. There are a number of companies that have experimented with the format. We're not the first ones. Um, so you can look at those um, that are, you know, and they point to their specific one. There's a whole bunch out there, but not many. And we're now at the threshold of 
if this is supposed to take root, it's on us to actually make it broadly available and have in instead of a few dozen, hundreds, thousands, many thousands of those so that this becomes the new norm. Um, and that's really my call to action to all of you that you know, look at the good examples at the apis.json website and, uh, and, and do your own part and together we'll build an avalanche. Thank you, Chris.